Uh, we'll resume our meeting. We just uh, had about a half hour executive session, and prior to that, we spent 90 minutes uh, as our second goal setting meeting for the 2017 2018. Uh, school committee goals, and we will be approving those goals next week. Presenting those, and uh, we'll be voting on those goals next week. Hopefully, approving them. Uh, this time, public input. Seeing we only have three members here, and no one really from the real public. I don't even know if there's anybody from North Reading here. You're not from North Reading, are you? So, so no one here lives in North Reading, so you can't comment anyway. Okay. Uh, next, student report. Great, great job, student. Okay. Uh, Next, continued business, MSBA SSBC update, Mr. Bernard. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I do have a few things to, um, to speak to you about tonight, um, <clears throat> some of which I included in my report, others I was not able to because of a meeting that took place this morning, so I'll, I'll share with you the, the information there. But um, a couple of things to highlight for you are that um, you may recall that when the um, access road, the main access road uh, to this campus was repaved following the repairs to the drainage system, um, there was a request to infrared the seams to, to strengthen them. That work was completed on August 11th. Um, the hydro seating area, uh, I'll, I'll identify it as kind of outside of the media center as you come over the bridge from uh, Main Street to the, to the high school area of the, of the campus um, is scheduled to be um, hydro seated in September. And then I did want to talk to you a little bit about um, the punch list review meeting that took place this morning at nine o'clock um, among the people that participated, um, Mr. Webster was there, myself, we had representatives from PMA, Doran Whittier and Gilbane, um, Chuck Carucci, the SSBC chairman and the town administrator, Michael Gilberto. And I think it was, I think it was a productive meeting, about two hours where we reviewed um, what appears to be 26 remaining items on the punch list. Um, the most significant number um, were attributed to, so I'll call them kind of warranty paperwork items paperwork, that, yeah. that Doran Whittier is seeking to provide to us. Yep. So um, there was a commitment on the part of Gilbane to have um, essentially everything wrapped up by September 15th, some, some sooner than that. Right. Um, some work was even done today. Um, well, there was actually one that they said would probably go into October, which was that additional material. I think it's the for the for oh, the for uh, the, uh, the fabric fabric for the yeah, chairs for right the, for the, the uh, performing arts center, right right it has been ordered right but I think it was a productive meeting there are still a few items I'd say I think there are five that require some um, some kind of some physical labor beyond just say warranty paperwork um, and I, I'm encouraged with the progress that has been made I think you know having PMA there having Doran Whittier there and having Gilbane all in the same room with us was uh, was I think certainly the prudent thing. And as we look to the next SSBC meeting on uh, September 19th, I think we can, you know, right now I feel a level of assurance that we'll be able to, to move forward at that meeting and, and, and kind of identify um, where, where we think there might be anything outstanding. Yeah, I think, he, I think basically the commitment was to, um, as you said, get everything done by the 15th, except for that one item. Um, they talked about getting their final invoice done, correct? correct. Right. Um, in That's the next right. day or two, once yep. a, a few things um, were approved and reviewed. Actually, today, I think she was committed. Right. We was committed to that today. And I mean, the main area of work is right outside the central admin office. There are a couple drains that Correct. just aren't draining correctly, and that's probably the largest project of. The, although the, the other the other ones are those other um, manhole covers that have to be reviewed by the um, public works department. There were two. There were two of those. But right. I think, I think you're right. I think the, the drains outside the central office. You know, they, I felt a strong commitment today to resolve that. Yes. Um, there's also some outstanding landscaping items. There's about I'll right. say roughly 30 plantings between trees and grasses that I think we had a good discussion around today. And, and the question on that was um, whether we have them do the work, or we monetize Correct. it, and we get the money, and and we'll do the work. So. So Bill Brown, the landscape architect, was going to be asked to right. kind of price that out. But I agree. But again, I overall, a productive meeting. Very productive meeting. I think um, we're getting close to finally seeing a I day so. when we don't have anybody from Gilbane or uh, PMA or Doran Whittier spending too much time on our campus. The only other thing close. I would add, too, is it's come up at other meetings about the tennis court surface, and I was happy today. There was a commitment on the, on the part of New England Seal Code to, uh, to have that work. Um, completed by the end of August, and they did show up today and did some some substantial work. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I did ask, um, because our tennis coach also coaches soccer, he was on campus today, and I asked him to come up, um, and he did. 
to kind of take a look at what he thought the progress was being made. And you know, I think he's got a little bit more expert eye than say I do, or and he seemed pleased with what they were doing. You asked about the Hall of Fame display while he was there. I did not. I chose <laughs> to pick my battle this morning. <laughs> But that was good. I, you know, they're gonna, they're still back. The, the tennis courts. If, I don't know how many people will catch this on public, but we did, we did lock them for tonight because of the, the, the new surface. You know, we want to let that cure. So there were people playing out there today, though, weren't there? I mean, what time? I did hope they get not. To come here? They were here this morning. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. They were. They, we locked them at about three o'clock when they left. Um, so progress there. I think there's there's one other item, and and I know that. Um, we don't know the determination in terms of whether we're going to be able to um, have someone else pay for the work, but we're, we're looking at the repairs that are probably needed for the um, high school parking, parking lot. lot. Yeah, high school, middle school parking lot. And uh, that was discussed briefly today. It's a separate item. It's not on the punch list. Um, but I know many of us have been out there, and there's definitely some work that needs to be done before the winter if, because those the cracks that we have will probably expand significantly if we Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say you're right. I, I agree 100% and I think it's fair to say that um, between myself, the town administrator and that's kind of one set of conversations that have been taking place and then we've also involved the DPW uh, local public works director too to talk about what might a remedy look like, but I think yeah, I think we have a few options available to us right, right. now. But I, I agree with you. Something needs to be done. I think one one of the interesting thing that came out of this meeting, not directly related to the punch list, is we were uh, I was discussing with uh, um, the PMA guys the Saugus project, which they're also the project manager on the new Saugus High School Middle School Joint School project. It's essentially the same size as our project, um, the few square feet off maybe, and that's going out at 153 million dollars. So. It's essentially a six-year difference when they're going to start in eight months. So essentially, actually, and then we started about two years before. So it's about six years, 123 million for us. It's going to be 153 million for them. So, uh, you know, we're 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 fortunate that we got in when we did because you know prices have cost um, costs has gone up significantly over the last four or five years. Not to mention that we're done and they're starting. Exactly, we're yeah. done and they're starting in eight months. They're probably break ground. So. Anyway, anything else on the? I don't think I have anything more, Mr. Chairman. Anybody from anything from the committee? Okay. Nope. Next, we have uh, the fiscal year 2019 budget development calendar. Great. Mr. Connolly. Great. Thank you. So, in your packet this evening was a uh, draft calendar for consideration for, believe it or not, already discussing fiscal 2019 budget development schedule. But essentially, uh, similarly as we have in the past, we kind of followed the same. Um, key dates and timeline that has certainly been in line with the town's budget process um, and to highlight some of these certainly key dates is that the month of September would certainly focus on the, the development and approval of our large capital plan um, so that presentation would take place on September 11th with uh, hope that the school committee would then vote the official large capital plan on the meeting of September 25th um, we thought at that September 25th meeting as well, we would discuss and hopefully issue and approve the FY19 budget goals. Certainly by then, the overall school committee goals that you discussed earlier today would be adopted and we would certainly use that as a guideline and some of the uh, other goals we've had in the past to frame and um, develop the budget goals to kick off the FY19 uh, budget development process on September 25th. Um, we typically distribute our budget request sheets and go through that process as an administrative team on, you know, towards the end of October at an administrative council meeting. That would happen on October 19th, according to the schedule. Um, we would also present the enrollment projections. As we know, that's a key part of the budget development process. So to me, that's really the beginning of kind of the budget process and what the budget could look like for fiscal 19 because so much in terms of our staffing requests are driven by enrollment. So on November 13th, um, we would present a revised five and 10 year enrollment projections because by then we would obviously have our total one enrollment count and we use those numbers and birth rates and so forth to, to drive our enrollment projections. Um, the budget requests from the principals and budget leaders and directors would come back to myself, the director of finance and operations, just around, just before the Thanksgiving holiday. 
that would allow us to then spend some time through the month of December kind of putting a preliminary budget draft together. Um, on February 26th, uh, we, we, would, we felt we would talk about maybe some of the highlights of the state budget. Um, typically, the, the governor's budget would be released at the end of January or certainly by February 1st. So by February 26th, we felt there would be enough kind of dialogue that would have happened through many of the associations, MASS, MASC, and um, MASBO, in terms of pulling out the key drivers of the governor's budget. And we could maybe talk a little bit about what's behind what's in Chapter 70, what's within the lo local aid and so forth with the town and other ch other key budget drivers at the February 26th meeting. Um, around that date, we'd also, we would plan to release um, probably around the February uh, break, school break, or just after we would release our um, school budget document publicly, and that document would be uh, presented, uh, the preliminary budget would then be presented on March 12th, that's the same time frame we've done in the past. Um, once that occurs, we obviously would schedule our first budget workshop on March 22nd. Um, we would hold our public annual public hearing of the budget on Monday, April 9th. Um, in the past couple years anyway, there's been a need for a second budget workshop to discuss any comments and um, a dialogue that occurred at the public hearing that would occur on April 23rd. Um, hopefully by then we're getting close to a, a final recommended budget or a budget that we would be comfortable with voting on and we would present that budget to the Finance Committee on April 25th. And then the School Committee would vote a recommended budget on Monday, April 30th and that would be in line with the timeline that we have to submit, uh, you know, the warrant articles in time for the printing of the Town Meeting Warrant. Selectmen would vote the Town Meeting Warrant on May 7th and then the Town Meeting is on June 4th. So certainly these are just kind of the, the key dates um, in the process. Um, a lot of internal, you know, dates and things are happening with the administrative team and with various subcommittees, perhaps the budget, you know, our budget subcommittee um, along the way, you know, in mainly January, February, you know, March timeframe. But unless, if that being said, I'll turn over any, any questions, comments. Looks good to me. I don't have any issues with it. It's pretty much the same calendar we followed in the past few Similar, years. So. Yeah, it is. Seems like we just finished the budget. It does, doesn't I know. it? I know. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of did. So. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're comfortable, I'll just ask me that if there's a motion and an approval, and then we can, you know, finalize that. So can I have a motion to approve the uh, budget calendar as presented by Michael Connolly? So moved. Second. I think we have approved it in the past, though, haven't we? I think we should approve it. Yeah, I think it's okay, okay. too. Yeah, yeah I don't no think harm. Why not. It's yeah. just I didn't think it says discussion here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I would. I think so. Yeah. No one has to second it. Second. Yep. All in favor? A public Aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Unanimous. I thought you did second it. <laughs> okay. Next, we have, and uh, I think in the past we've appointed our superintendent to be our representative on. We have both the uh, appointment to the board of the North Shore Education Consortium and also the SEAM Collaborative, Mr. Bernard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm more than happy to continue to serve in that capacity for both uh, special education collaboratives. These are the two collaboratives in which we participate. Correct. We are um, members at both. Right. Should we see if there's any committee members interested? Or? Uh, any committee members interested? My guess is that's going to be no. And I also think that John's probably. I was going to say I think John's probably the best representative. The best representative, Great. but unless uh, anyone is interested. All right, so let's do these separately. First, let's have a mo uh, can I have a motion to appoint Mr. Bernard as a board, our board representative for the North Shore Education Consortium Board of Directors? I make a motion just like that. Okay, <laughs> can I have a second? All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And now can I have one for to appoint Mr. Bernard to the SEAM Collaborative Board of Directors? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Well, this is going to be a fast meeting. I hope so. <laughs> it's going to get I need to slow down a little bit here. No. <laughs> 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 you're going to have nothing. No pressure, right. Mel. Dan, you're going to get nothing it's out of tonight. It's going to take Julie a while to get through the donations. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's a lot of donations. <laughs> okay, next we have um, minutes. And the first minutes are for the goals workshop on July 24th. 
2017. I reviewed these. It looks fine to me. So I have a motion and a second, please. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting of the school committee budget. Uh, no. Sorry. Goals <laughs> workshop. Yes. Second. Um, July 24th. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> then we have the July 24th, 2017 executive session. <laughs> Move to approve the uh, July 24th, 2017 executive session minutes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Then we have the July 24th, 2017 regular meeting, open session. I'd move to approve the July 24th, 2017 open session minutes. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? <laughs> okay, finally, and there's this one needs to be fixed. No documents on that bill. The July 27th meeting where we only had the meeting to approve the, we have all of the things listed under second reading policy, DK and DKR student activities funds policy, but there's about four different, mm -hmm. so right. we need to revise these before we Vote on them. Can you fix that? Have that fixed, John? I can. I'll speak to you. So we'll just table those for tonight. What are you saying? Dave? Because all the all of the motions we made are listed under the policy DK and DKR student activities, oh, but they they're all different. They should be separate. Do you want, yeah. do you want yeah. to approve with that edit? Yeah. So we can have a motion to approve with the that they're edited to correctly um, define each um, each policy we voted on. So if I can have a motion in a second. Motion to approve. With edits. With recommended edits. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> okay, next. We have no budget update. We didn't, nope, that's correct. We still have a budget, though. We do. We do. <laughs> There's one other item under budget update, though. Oh, there is. So, um, yeah, there is no financial budget update tonight, but um, sticking with the you know, relations with booster organizations policy, I, we did receive a new application for a new organization that has come forward and submitted an application to myself and we certainly wish to be recognized by the school committee. And um, certainly myself and Dr. Downs, who is here this evening, mm -hmm. have uh, been involved in discussions and, and a couple of meetings with an organization um, who wishes a group of parents that wish to come together and start an organization to help um, start a robotics, um, certainly team and an organization to help support a robotics competition and team at, at various cool. levels at both the elementary, middle school, and high school level. So um, they've submitted uh, uh, an application. They have a, they've certainly done their, the required steps to get started. They have a list of bylaws. They have a, a list of offices, president, treasurer, and they certainly created their own SDIN and bank account, and they're working on actually being 501c3 status. So they're, they're, they're waiting for final approval on that, but they have all the paperwork filed as of August 14th. Everything was certainly filed with the Attorney General's office, and they've been recognized as a public charity in the state of Massachusetts. So some of the things that, so they've certainly taken the right steps mm -hmm. to, to get started, and certainly myself and, and Dr. Downs have been certainly pleased in our conversations and meetings with them. They're they're very um, you know passionate group of parents that want to certainly promote and inspire um, certainly the students of North Reading to um, you know part of their mission statement as I'll kind of read from their application is to inspire young people to be science, technology, engineering, and mathematics leaders by engaging them in exciting mentor-based programs that build science, engineering, and technology skills that inspire innovation and that foster well-rounded life capabilities including self-confidence, communication and leadership. <coughs> so essentially, you know, they certainly want to promote a robotics, you know, club that's going to certainly support certainly our robotics curriculum here in, in the district and um, I think one of their main initiatives and objectives is to actually promote student involvement in robotics-based competitions um, their application says such as but not limited to, you know, first robotics, you know, IFI, I, VEX challenges and et cetera across the, the state of Massachusetts. So I think it's, I think they've been 
in communication with area districts that have done similar type, or, you know, created similar type organizations and helped um, support this type of mission and involvement in robotic space competitions. So I think it would be the district's um, objective is to certainly appoint liaisons through Dr. Downs and his staff, his digital learning staff, to work pretty closely with this organization um, to help you know make this a reality and um, certainly work in close collaboration with each other to um, to pursue a robotics competition. Um, anything else to add to that? Yeah. So um, most of the conversation really has you know I had spoken with uh, First Robotics around getting them involved in the district. And First Robotics, of course, is very heavily volunteer driven. And um, to, you know, this kind of comes about to kind of support you know, some of the fundraising that goes along with all the different roles that are involved with First Robotics. Um, and as you can see, they've also included Vex Robotics. So ultimately, it's a, it's a great opportunity to involve the community a little bit more in, in some of the you know, promotion around the robotics curriculum. Um, also, many of the programs through FIRST are offered at all levels. Mm -hmm. um, so this group will, you know, have some, you know, some very motivated parents and community people to mentor and support the groups that they are able to, you know, support through this application. A couple questions. Mike, can you move the microphone over? Right to, so oh, yeah, sure. So we don't, we don't have a robotics club now, or do we? We have a middle school robotics club. But not at the high school. Not at the high school. So is the plan to, it, will there be a plan, are there a group of students who are interested in starting one, or is that something we'll, we'll see down the road? I think, you know, within a year or so, it's definitely a possibility and that the class is starting this fall at right. the high school. Um, I would hope to see one. I think it's a heavy possibility. Um, has not come up. I mean, we've had the tech help desk students who've right. been very heavily in robotics. We just weren't per se a robotics club. We did a lot of related technology projects. Um, but I think, you know, once we get more students excited around the opportunity, we're going to see more interest and, and become more targeted specific in that area. So the other question I or I guess slash comment I have is, so they, they can't they aren't going to raise funds for teaching staff or classroom or career. they can raise funds for they can buy equipment and but but they're not going to raise funds so we can hire people or because because we can't do that right i mean it's part of our staff right correct correct right so this will be mainly for equipment or transportation or registration costs for a conference or yeah, whatever right. whatever the students yeah, are participating in equipment um Certainly, transportation costs, registration costs. Right. But it, I mean, I would think you could like hire an expert to come in. All oh, right, after training. school. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Could be, it could be that. Yeah. Right. Right. We, but it we, would not be anything. No staffing within the school. Day. Right. That's what right. It's yeah. all extracurricular. Right. And they're just at the starting point of the fundraising process. So um, our goal is just to really support them as a liaison for, you know, what levels are really interested. You know, in terms of finding someone in that building who can connect with them around you know, that time of day they want to have the program, um, you know, just to kind of get them going as well as, you know, you know, most of the interest is around our programs and what we've been already already able to start. They're just kind of starting out on this road. Any other questions or comments? Julie? So where do you see, where are these parents, you know, where are they situated? Are they more at the elementary level, the middle school level? It's, it's a mix. Um, I've had three meetings with the parents, you know, just kind of introductory interest-based meetings. Um, I see a, a strong, you know, a couple of parents who are middle school, middle school, elementary, really, you know, heavy elementary, middle school, and some light high school. Okay. Um, I would say it's balanced between elementary and middle mainly. So this, I, I this first robotics group, would this be almost like a chapter of this group? Yes, for, they, you know, it's, it's a volunteer, mentor-driven organization that yes. it ends up being self-sustaining, self sure. ideally, um, and they would be creating their own chapter, okay. in essence, for this, this district. So we can get more information just by looking up that group. You can. Right. Okay. right. John, do you have a comment you want? I was just going to add that the, 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 the spirit behind this is it would be elementary, middle, and high school. Right. 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 It, it, there, are, there are levels of competition that address all three. Levels. Right. Yeah. But the fundraising, and, it, and if you look very closely at the first kind of way first is set up, 
Um, it's easier to start those elementary groups due to the cost of the robotics and the curriculum, you know, and, and as that program scales, it usually is a two to three year kind of growth period before some of the higher level robotics happens for the high school. It's kind of a, it's a growth process with both the teams where, you know, down the road in Reading, who has a very established team who's been there for, I think, I imagine over 20 years. Now they've had that, that team in the school. Um, they're very established, so they're able to operate on all levels. It's something that takes a lot of time to build and develop and, and, and maintain the supportive um, part of the community piece and the parents. And that, that's kind of at the spirit of our kind of becoming a liaison for them and helping them is to keep that sustainability connected to the schools. So uh, I have no issues with, th with this. I think it's great. But are you looking for a vote tonight? Because the only concern I have is we haven't seen any paperwork or, or anything. So, I, I mean, I don't know if you're looking for a vote tonight or if we can wait till the next meeting or I think we we believe their paperwork is all in order just consistent with what it is for other booster groups that so we'll just apply. be we'll just be voting tonight to accept this as a new booster group Michael has reviewed yeah, the paperwork we and them right. as an organization we would okay. donations for and kind of collaborate with with a school liaison okay so as long as you as you have reviewed yeah, the paperwork and and no, as long as you've reviewed it because right, you know I it. you know all the you know what the regulations that they yeah. have to meet so and that's certainly in line with the other 11 or 12 organizations that we've recognized already. Um, everything that they've um, filed and what's in order was in line when we recognized them about two years ago um, as okay. well. So I think I'm, I'm confident everything's in place. Okay, so with that said, I will entertain a motion to approve as an official boosters group in North Reading, the North Reading First Robotics Boosters Incorporated. Yes. So moved. Any further discussion? The only, only thing I would say is um, I just think, I just want to thank the people that are doing this because I think this is something <clears throat> in line with the committee goals of trying to establish robotics. And right. again, I think it's a shame that we don't have money in our budget to do some of the things we want to do, but it's great that parents and community members step up to try to help fund you know, it, things that really should be part of public education. and. You know, it's just great that we have a such a generous community that does that. Agree. Anything and, else? And I would I would just add that First is a, a very volunteer, mentor-driven organization that really looks to support whatever is happening in the district, um, and that's really the power behind the group is the mentors that are volunteering their time and the community people who are volunteering their time, and how these parents and these mentors are involved work very difficult to fundraise for those resources. Excellent. Okay, but first, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Downs. Thank Thanks, you. Michael. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have bids and donations. Staffing. Staffing. Oh. I wanted to get, I wanted to pass away, no. We had, so we had new staffing presented um, <coughs> two weeks ago. Are the last meeting so is this additional it is okay so in your packet mr chairman members of the committee there's uh, there's two pages um the, the the first page is staff that have been hired since the july 24th meeting so i'm, I'm pleased to announce and welcome to north reading wendy galante who will be a special education teacher in grade six at the middle school a number of paraprofessionals um deborah hayes will be a general power at the bachelor school Sherry LaMonica, a special education paraprofessional, also at the Bath Childers School, and Melissa Tassinari will be a general paraprofessional also at the Bath Childers School. At the Little School, Cassandra Barbas will be a general ed, uh, excuse me, a general paraprofessional in the kindergarten class. At the Middle School, Catherine Marsland and Stephen Spinali will both be um, special education paraprofessionals. We have hired a custodian to fill a uh, resignation in the district. Um, gentleman Joseph Howard began today actually as on the uh, at the middle school high school campus and not on your list but hired today was a an art teacher at the Hood School Jacqueline Mora so she will be joining us uh, at the new teacher orientation along with all of our other teachers tomorrow and Wednesday. So. Is she going to be here in time for the bus ride? She will be here at 8.30. Okay, I just want to make sure given it was the late she no hire. Ex she has no excuses having met with me to just today. All right. <laughs> Well, I think I saw her when I was leaving. Was that when I was leaving my meeting? You might have, yes. Yeah. Yes, you would have. Yeah, Is right. that the luncheon tomorrow? Tomorrow's the lunch, yeah. Tomorrow's lunch. What do you have? Chartwells. It's actually pretty good. Is. I don't know if I can make it tomorrow, but they, they have a pretty good it's feed that they have. Well, 
time is it? No, well, I'm gonna. I, I have some things okay. I'm gonna review with you tonight. I, I, but yes, it's 12 o'clock. Okay. Now that we've gone over staffing that I so rudely <coughs> um, passed over, now we can get to donations. Who wants to read these tonight? I think Lily should I'll do, do it. She does so good. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Okay. I kind of look. Miss Gopkin. We are busy. <laughs> Okay, I would like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of materials value, valued at $97.48 from Moynihan Lumber to support North Reading High School student Tom Lasden's Eagle Scout project. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Before we go to the next one, I have a question on that. Yes. On that, um, the case looks very nice, but there's a tree right in front of it. And you cannot see it coming up the driveway. Well, it's only a message on the other side, though. Oh, so there's yeah. no, there won't be a message no, on? the back okay. is the logo. The OK. Logo, yeah. yeah. So it's coming down. I still would like to see. I wish that tree wasn't there, but <laughs> that's just me. Oh, you'll okay. be causing a whole other problem. Yeah. Cutting down trees. I'll cut the, I'll come down during the night. It's a small tree. Go ahead, Julie. OK. To make a motion that this committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation totaling $255 from the Little Elementary PTO to pay for the bus for the grade five field trip to Duck Tours. Second. Motion second for the Duck Tour field trip donation. Any further discussion? Scott, did you go on that trip? No. Oh, okay. I did not. My kids are too young still. Oh, that's not fifth grade. That's right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Well, this is going to the third now. All right. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation totaling $318.20 from the Little Elementary PTO to purchase headphones for the students at the Little Elementary School. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous? Aye. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 to be used for scholarships for two North Reading High School seniors from the class of 2017. Second. From I was gonna say. Craig and oh, Kathleen Jamison. Still want to second it? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation totaling $590 from Mary Sanger, Andrew First and Samantha Poland, Michael and Karen Martin, and China Cuisine. Do you think I need to itemize those? Or? No. Okay. Second. To support North Reading High School <laughs> student Tom Lasden Eagle Scout Project. That's the same display case as Moynihan donated the equipment materials for. Oh, they can use the uh, Hall of Fame case. Would you like Fair to well. second that again? Second it again. <laughs> second. <laughs> We have a motion and a second. Third. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation totaling $800 from Edward and Kimberly Baker toward the grade five field trip to Canopy Lake Park and Aye. the grade five end of year <laughs> celebration. <laughs> Did someone second that? No, go ahead. Mr. Buckley seconded that? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,700 from the Batchelder School Parents Organization to put toward the purchase of a smart board for room one. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total don donation of $2,750 from Fit Revolution for the two 2017 Hornet Hustle. Gift amounts as follows, Bachelder $500, Hood $500, Little $750, Middle School $500, and the High School $500. Second. I think they, uh, the little got 750 because they had the most participants, mm -hmm. correct? That's Isn't that how it works? Yeah. Yep. Again. Nice job, Scott. Again. Yeah. I certainly did not run, but. It is, it is quite a rivalry. Did you run? Yeah. Jerry did. Oh, Jerry did? Yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. Did you win? <laughs> For your age group? It was a 1K. I was, <laughs> I was the only 67 year old in the race. <laughs> What's you a K? You finished the next day, but. Huh? It was a K. It was a K. It was a K. <laughs> Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 
I to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation totaling $2,880 from the Little Elementary PTO to defray field trip transportation costs for all grades at the Little Elementary School. Second. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $4,567.27 to be used for the purchase of a new marquee sign at North Reading High School. Yeah. From the North Reading High School class of 2017. Do you have a second? Uh, second. Further discussion on that. Discussion. Yeah, yes, yeah. go ahead. No, Mr. The marquee sign, is that the one that goes out in front there that's the, the, the one now with the letters, the yeah. yes. So I've actually. Um, is this that supposed to be updated? Like you're kind of that, yeah. getting yeah. monies, so it's an electronic. Correct. There's right. I think we're in up to yeah. three or four class donations now to fund that project. Um, the signs are quite expensive. We're, we're envisioning like a digital one, a digital, digital program. And it will be higher too, I hope, so we can see it. The fence, fence line, yeah. So yeah. if you want to, I reached out to the superintendent at Masconom at last week. If you go by Masco, yeah. they put a new sign out. And I happen to go by when I go home. I'm by the other day. From here. And um, it's beautiful. It's very and nice. So That's it's funny, it's yeah. a local company. I think it's Tewksbury. Yeah. Um, and I've reached out to them to try to get some. We have, we've we've contracted some contacted some other sign companies. But when I saw the Masco one, I was very interested in kind of trying to replicate that. What's the that. I know for that? Right now, I don't know what theirs is, Masco, but we're, it's in the $20,000 range. You know what's nice one? Haverhill yeah, High School. Yeah, I was going to say, Haverhill High School has one, also Hunking School. So I didn't see the one at Masco working. I saw, does it have, is it like, um, it'll show different things on the screen, like something. Well, there are those that have like a picture, almost like a television type screen. No, or no, 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 message. just like the words go by. Yeah, and that's it, what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and that's Haverhill what they have at Haverhill High School. Like a nice brick. Uh, yes. Facade. That's, brick what, facade, that's what Masco yeah. did. And they yeah. actually, it has like, I'm going to say it's like a roof. It's almost yes. like a little yeah. like yes. canopy. Nice. So. Nice. But it has to be higher so you can see over the Correct. fence, right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, I don't want to miss, this. we're a long way off from this being completed. Okay. We still don't have enough money to support it. I mean, there's all building inspector, you know, this this is, but it's it's in the well, works. Is going to be involved? Uh, I think they would have to be, yeah. Couple of costs, no. but I don't so, see that as a problem given the, uh, <laughs> given so here's the question. That we already have a sign. It would be replacing the sign that's there. I know it's going to take a while, but is that the best location for it, or is there somewhere else we could put it, like, right down at the intersection of Park Street I think we could do school pretty much whatever was desired, but there's, the, I was, we're, we're kind of thinking that spot because there's already power there. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a cost we wouldn't have to It's absorb. like right, it's like near the turf field, nice. it's like right where the sign yeah. is now. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking of if we could right. put it further down where the intersection yeah. is of yeah. the corner because. But it's funny, every time I go by one of those, like at Haverhill, I see that, I see where that would look nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the plan anyway. We've got three or four classes now. I think we're up yeah. to around $12,000, maybe somewhere in that area, so. Yeah. But it's not cheap. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Very generous tonight. Thank you again Aye. to the community. Outstanding. Okay, what else do we have here? Bids and donations. We're done. Subcommittee updates. Um, policy subcommittee met on July 27th. Anything to report? Uh, I mean, I think we, there's nothing here for tonight, but we started going over the recommendations of MASC and looking at our policies and combining, you know, we're gonna have some, some are just minor edits, um, others we're gonna have to bring to the committee to approve, but generally we're just trying to make sure that we're in, generally in compliance and if there's new language or suggestions, try to update our policies. Yeah, that was that big document that Karask yeah. sent out, right? Nine about a, about a, 90, yeah, some are yeah. no longer useful. And yeah. Yeah, about a third of them. Yeah. Right, that's it. We make good progress. Yeah. Just, just one comment. I believe on the mask listserv, when we were talking about dress code policies, I believe it's Lexington has a policy that they took verbatim from mask, and they suggested people who are questioning those types of policies, if that is in the works, to possibly look at that document. Yeah, I, I think I downloaded that, to, I saw that too. I was gonna send it to John, but I never got around to it. It's, it goes along the lines of what we were discussing before, how it's okay. kind of gender neutral and... Generic. Yeah, gen it might be something worth worth looking at. We have a meeting coming up. Okay. So what, either Julie or I, one of us will yeah. get, it, get it to you. And I mean, I would say that everything we've gotten to so far, because there are 99 of them, it takes a while. Um, we haven't gotten to anything that I 
I don't think we got the section that would have had any of the dress code okay. students okay. in there yet anyway, so. All right, do you think it's fair? I think after the September 14th meeting, we probably will be bringing a few to the committee. Yeah. Do you think, mm. for re right? Mm. I think we'll be in a position to do that probably at September 25th meeting. Okay. Right. And the next, the NORCAM board did not meet, right? No. So you don't have a report? I do not. You sure they didn't just change I the meeting place? <laughs> they didn't want you to go? Okay, next, the finance planning team. I actually did find my notes, Jerry, on my, on my phone. We're all better for that. Uh, hold on, and I will tell you. Um, let's see, finance planning team. Um, Selectman Prisco, who is uh, now the chair of the school committee and uh, school committee. <laughs> <laughs> He'd like to be a chair. Of the slip. <laughs> He's chair of the selectman and uh, chair of the finance planning team. Talked about um, how the selectmen are going to work this year to, um, in terms of growth and budgeting, connect connect their budget to long-term strategic plans. And we talked about how the schools have been trying to do that for the last few years. Um, Michael talked a little bit about that, how we have a three-year mm -hmm. um, plan. And so they're gonna be um, focusing a lot more on that and focusing on going forward how debt service, what kind of impact that's gonna have on the town and, and how we can budget. Um, Mr. Prisco talked about our level service budgets are virtually impossible and I think we all agreed with that. Uh, we really haven't been able to even implement a level services budget over the last few years. It's been level services minus. We haven't been able to um, really keep up with even level services. Um, Mr. Connolly talked about having a fluid, the schools would have a fluid draft budget document in the end of December, early January, but that's not for, in February is when we'll get the budget presented, but Michael was just saying how in that time frame we'll start to get an idea of, of what our budget number is gonna look like, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, we have, we'll have a preliminary draft, early stages, very fluid document, right, around, right after the holiday season, early January, that starts the conversation. We also were informed that free cash will be expected to be a lot less next year than it was this right. past year because there was a lot of money that was not spent in the uh, Public Works Department. And uh, we ended up, I think, with over 1.7 million in free cash last year. Some of that's been spent, um, but I think there's still a good chunk of that is still in free cash. Um, just a brief discussion on the the Pulte uh, Homes project over on uh, Route 62, the old Berry property. They want they'd like to start building in January. Um, and they, I know we still don't have a final signed agreement with them yet. Yeah, there's been a few, few lean issues and things uh, like that. I think yeah. loose ends. The loose ends, right? Basically, is what they have. Um, I mean, the reason why we're discussing that is, is the quicker those buildings come online, the quicker we start realizing tax revenues from, from that property. I think as soon as the property is sold, right. there'll be an expectation when the, of some tax money. Right, but when the buildings are on there, right. Well, anyway, and it, 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 Mr. Webster, the, the town, if they close sooner rather than later, gets... We'll get more funds. money. Are they on pace to close? Yes. Um, cool. yeah. Yes. Before, I think it's before, I think it's like before December November 30th. Yeah, or it was yeah. December 1st, but... Yeah. It seems like they are, but they are still some loose ends that they're trying to. They're minor issues, but they relate to like the former owner or the former holder of the rights to the property, and so there's some complications in getting I all the paperwork, Mike Prisco et cetera. Been working almost daily on getting that done with Mike Gilberto. So. He was saying that their hope is by the end of calendar 18, Polte's hope is they'll have two buildings of 50 units each, so 100 units, which obviously would con contribute a fairly significant amount of tax money. Real are, estate in, taxes. in terms of the sales process, are, are they going to be trying to sell them while they're still building them? I, I, I can guarantee you they'll start selling I them. I think so. Right. When they're so that when they're, as soon as they open, they theoretically have people can have some in. sold and yeah. move in? I yeah. would think that's the plan. I don't know that for a fact, but I would certainly think right. so. Because they are going to phase them in. I mean, they're going to phase them in as, right. you know, like Mel said, 100 units. Or and uh, the town finance director said we could recognize first tax revenues in fiscal 19. If they, if they, if all this follows, if all this happens, um, I think that's pretty much. We talked about the October now town meeting. We talked about need for additional funds for the uh, MWRA uh, project, but that may be on hold after. Yeah, we got briefed on that, but they did make us aware of the fact that the uh, uh, that the Andover is right. now making an offer that we may not be able to refuse. So right. It's going to be an interesting vote. I don't know what's <coughs> going to come of it, but. It seemed like they were in a three to two vote in favor of going MWRA, and now mm -hmm. um, they're going back to have discussions with Andover and see if that uh, deal will uh, 
you know, without that meeting. It yeah. was a compelling yeah, well, argument right. by Andover. It's a compelling <laughs> argument. I mean, it's just that they were a little bit far down the road, I think, right now for them to be. When is that vote right. set? The next uh, selectman's meeting is supposed to vote. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to have something mm. signed, sealed, and delivered. Something actually proposed. Yeah, Mr. The, the selectmen are asking for a formal proposal from Andover. Gotcha. What well, Andover's out. proposing could save us a significant amount of money right. in the shot in the long term, I think. Yeah. So. Right. And then just briefly, uh, John, Mr. Bernard discussed uh, the status of the high school project and where we were on closing the high school project. And that was it. Okay, next, uh, Secondary School Building Committee meeting on August 7th. Jerry or Janine? I don't know if there's anything we haven't covered. Was there, John? What are, what are we doing? The, no, I, I mean, the, had, the focus was on the closeout. Close out. Right. We had, we had uh, Gil Bain was there. Joanna was there, right? Yeah, was there. Dorn Dorn was there. Brad, Brad, Brad Dorn was there. Showed up. Yep. Um, <laughs> and there was discussion of what we have to do, and I think a lot of it was around the punch list and, yep. and what the schedule was going to be, and I think, John, some of that was... Yeah, through my report to you tonight, I think, yeah, I think we made some really, I think today's meeting was, was very informative. I think it was I mean, productive. The closeout's going to be complicated, mm -hmm. quite frankly, by some of the ongoing uh, matters that we have with uh, um, not only, well, PMA and, and Dorn Whittier in particular. Right. Um, including the, the existing lawsuit. Right. And the uh, dispute we currently have with PMA over the payment of uh, their, right. their bill. Last so invoice, yeah. until we get those things resolved, I don't think we're going to be able to close out. That doesn't well, we can, the project, project can be completed, but project closing project. out the MSBA, yeah. we won't be able to do that until all legal matters which and includes, payments, et cetera, are settled. Which includes our final reimbursement right. the MSBA, which is about 5% being held, which translates to about $2.5 million. Two and a half million dollars. Dollars. So. Right. And then finally, the athletic subcommittee. Um, Jerry? I took notes and I, I left I have the notes. Desk, but I, I know that... Uh, we were about thirty thousand dollars in the black as far as right. the revolving account at the end of the uh, correct at the end of the year, which is really good news. We did discuss um, going out and getting bids on the softball scoreboard, which uh, for the so new softball field, which Mr. Bernard had done. We then also got um, bids uh, uh, or costs quotes for the installation of the scoreboard, and unfortunately, the installation is almost twice the cost of the scoreboard itself. So. We're going to have to look as to whether we can afford that, whether we can get some donations I think we're for talk that. About softball again. We thought they actually wanted to be at the meeting, but they weren't. Right. See so. if softball might be able to donate some money. Maybe there's someone else that can install it at a lower cost. The installation was about ten thousand, wasn't 9, it? Yeah. yeah. The and total the, project was about sixteen. Yeah, right. We'd like to do it. I mean, in addition to what we've already spent for the electrical. Right. So the electrical is there, right? About a twenty. It is. Yeah. yeah. So that w that was discussed. Um, we also discussed uh, again Facilities. other needed equipment at the fields. Um, we've got the soccer goals, which are down there already. It was great. The girls' soccer team was uh, was practicing today and, on and the this new weekend, field. They right. Had the, uh, Labor soccer Day tournament, tournament right. soccer tournament, youth tournament, which was good. So they were out there playing. Right. There, so that was the first official event, other than yeah. people. Uh, we had some tracks track we, teams. We tried to establish to priorities. One of the other things we're talking about is a. Uh, Batting cage. Right. Batting cages, um, uh, tops, uh, tops for the uh, dugout out areas. Yeah. Um, right. So we're looking at all those things. I think you know, one of the things, again, is if we're going to do all, all these things, we're going to need donations. We're not going to be able to do all this out of the budget. There's just, there's just no way, either the budget or the revolving fund. Um, and then finally, we talked um, about the restroom concession stand facilities. As I think Mr. Venezia or someone said at the meeting previously, this will be my legacy in North Reading. The restrooms at the uh, turf field. Very proud of that, and um, that's moving along. We actually had a great meeting. That was a good meeting. A couple of weeks ago, and um, we met with Construction Dynamics. We met with the uh, company that uh, the Connecticut Connecticut-based company that actually builds the building, and then brings it in, brings it up here, and lifts it into place. I think he said four pieces. Did he say? Correct. And uh, the uh, engineer, uh, engineer planning company, and everything. Um, from what I've seen, is going smoothly. The construction dynamics was supposed to meet with uh, the building inspector. I don't know if that happened. I wanted to speak with uh, town administrator Mike Gilberto today. We had another meeting, but I wasn't able to talk to him it was about that. To meet, I, I meet, I think a week ago Thursday. Yes, they were, yeah. and uh, we have another meeting scheduled on September 12th. They're hoping to get shovels in the ground on September 19th. I know they were talking to Marty Tilton today um, right. about um, some work that they're going to be doing down there in the next few days or so. One of the things we've got to deal with is the 
concessions because right. it looks like mid-September they'll be doing the demolition. Right, and I think Marty and, and Rita have been dealing with the booster groups and, and other groups that use concessions, mainly the football um, boosters. Correct. And they've also been dealing with the town health inspector. And um, I think they've got something worked out where they'll have a tent and be able to actually ha ha still have yeah. food for youth football and, 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 right. and stuff like that. Right, so um, the ho hope is that by the end of October, all of the infrastructure work is done. And then um, the representative from the building company said they expected the building to be built, completed by, um, by February. February yeah. They could, th he expected they could actually bring that building up here and just come up in February, they get a big crane, they lift the four pieces up and they drop them down on the, uh, on the uh, foundation. Everything is completed inside, all the fixtures and everything. So they just drop it and then it's just gonna be connected, electricity, plumbing, sewer. It was very encouraging because they were a good group. I yes. Mean, they felt comfortable with very. it. Very, yep. yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing that they brought up, and it's interesting, but uh, the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen will love this, but they actually showed us some options for the exterior. So they had the regular pressed concrete, which was is painted, and we could paint it green or right. whatever color. And then they had a uh, pressed concrete that had like a design, right? In it. And then they showed us a, a pretty good example, a pretty good uh, sample of a brick veneer that would come close to matching or be similar to the, the team rooms that are down there, which was really nice. And initially they said that would be about an extra twelve thousand right. dollars, but by the time we left, I think there, he said ten, but right. 10. So it, it's um, and that would be done right at the factory. And they had that. John has it in his so, office, and I wanted him to yeah. bring it out to show you guys at the uh, nice. at the last at the goals <laughs> meeting. Yeah. Here's the thing, we though. Get him to give us another ten or twelve samples. Right. Exactly. Big enough. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the the <laughs> thing is, we them. should most of the contingency funds we have, most of the contingency issues are going to be site. related to site work. site work. Once the site work is done, now there are some a few other things that came up today about electricity yeah. and reconnecting things, but once the site work is done there shouldn't be a whole lot more content. So if we don't spend a lot of that contingency money on either that site work or the electricity issues, we should have an, enough funds to put the brick, it would be nice. and the brick, the brick facing would look great for you know curb appeal, it would driving kind of by. Match. I'm not, it wouldn't be an exact match, right. obviously. But, but you have, match. right. Uh, yeah. I, think it, I think we liked it more than we thought we were gonna yeah. like yeah. it. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. Sure, yeah. So I'm, I'm encouraged. Um, they're, they are committed to being completed by March 15th, except for the final paving, um, March 15th of 2018, because the final paving won't be able to be done until the paving plant's open, which is around April 15th. But they said there would be a base in there that would be like a gravel base. So we'll be able to use it in the spring season, but the paving won't be done until um, you know mid-April, April. mid to late April. But very encouraged. Um, good meeting. Good meeting, good group. The con company that's doing the building has done a zillion of these same kind of buildings, so um, there's there's no issue there, and it's a, it's a pretty simple project, um, and uh, again I, I'm just really happy we we're able to get it at what I think is a very affordable number that we didn't think we were going to be able to do. So I can't wait to see Don Keller for another twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> no, we're not going to ask for more money if we can't do that within the 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 money we have for the project. Um, we're not going to we're not going to do that. So that's all we have from the. Uh, there wasn't anything else, was there? Yeah, athletic. I don't think so. No. no. The numbers we had good yeah, good, good numbers. Good. I think John said there were last, over 350. Oh, right. I think it was 352. That's so, great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's for fall sports. Very significant. Yeah, sports. We have huge numbers, I know, for girls' soccer. Protein, Which, I mean, boys' soccer is the, the same. population of the school. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And we have good numbers for football, too. I think it was 74. Yeah. For football? Yeah. 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 Uh, 63, I think, for soccer. Boys and soccer. and it's, going to be, it's going to be nice for the athletic director and the coaches to be able to have that new field um, to schedule practices and JV games and et cetera. There'll be less use it won't of. will be as cramped. Right. There'll be less <laughs> use of the baseball it. field. I did get an answer back from Marty Tilton when we were in the okay. oh, you did? water. Yes. He said he was on it. We okay. okay on it? All right. Yep. He's here to check it out. So, yeah. Okay. Administrative report. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Committee, committee meetings. Subcommittee. Why do we have to report these? 
Okay, in case anybody wants to come, oh no, you can't come. The finance planning team is meeting September 11th. The athletic subcommittee is meeting September 12th. That's also the same day as the next meeting for the- Yeah, job meeting. For the, the job meeting for the restrooms and concession stand. Policy subcommittee, September 14th. SSBC, September 19th. And NORCAM, September 28th. Administrative report, Mr. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I have a few things to talk to you about tonight. Um, and attached to my report is a copy of my summer newsletter that went out last week. Just passing that along to you for your reading enjoyment. Um, a number of important dates and events coming up in the next um, couple of months that I wanted to get to you early so you can um, plan your calendars. Um, we, tomorrow and Wednesday, we will be welcoming new staff at our traditional uh, two-day new teacher orientation program. You're all invited to come by in the high school cafeteria around 12 o'clock if you'd like to meet and greet and have a little lunch. We certainly would love to have you. Um, just again, for, for your information, um, on Thursday, August 31st, and also on September 7th, we will be distributing the Chromebooks to grade seven families. Very excited about this initiative. We, we've done a sign up, appointments only, for the group, by 30 minute groupings of about 25. Um, parents have been very good about responding to sign up for the appointments. There's a little bit of education that goes along with um, getting the Chromebook. So we, were, we are targeting August 31st as kind of the bulk of the distribution because that happens to be also the day for the middle school uh, orientation, the traditional walkabout day. So. Um, but folks can also make an appointment for September 7th if, um, if the 31st does not work for them. So we've had a, a very busy summer in the technology department prepping the, the computers. Um, we have a number of high school students, very talented students, working with Dr. Downs and the tech staff to, uh, to prepare for August 31st. So it should be, a, should be a, an exciting uh, day. I think this is among one of the most significant educational initiatives this district has taken on in, in quite a while, and I think it's very exciting for for students. On September 5th, we will have our opening day um, for faculty. And if um, I'm hoping that the committee members are available, we do have a change in the time from what you're used to. I think I spoke about this a little bit in July 24th meeting, but um, we will have um, a 12 o'clock meeting in, in the uh, Performing Arts Center. So a lot of morning activities going on at the schools. Um, we will have a 12 o'clock meeting. Um, that will be kind of my remarks, chairman of the school committee, Right, uh, Chairman of the Teachers Union, excuse me, President of the Teachers Union. Um, Dr. What am I Dr. supposed to say? Dr. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Pressure refuse. Is on. You've done it before. Yeah. You've done it before. Yeah. Al doesn't like to talk that. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> we, ha shy. we have a lot to cover in 45 minutes. I only have 45 minutes with the group this year. I, I am worried about how I'm, there's a lot to talk about. Isn't that a shorter period, much shorter period? It's much shorter, but we have the keynote speaker at 115, and we're also capturing 30 minutes on a health insurance presentation while we have all of staff here, oh, okay. so the town hall um, will be coming with representatives from uh, IBG and RSI to talk to the staff about cost, cost saving measures. So it's a good thing, but I'm losing 30 minutes from our presentation time because of that, but I think it, I think it needs to happen because mm -hmm. I think we're all, we all have an opportunity to capture some yep. savings to benefit everyone. And so we've dedicated 30 minutes um, to that. So that'll happen at 1245. So it's gonna be a very fast paced uh, 45 minutes. And then we will welcome students back, grades 1 through 12, on September 6th with our pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, kindergarten orientation on the 6th and 7th and first day for those students in pre-kindergarten and kindergarten on Friday, September 8th. And then the information in the last three bullets is new for all of you. So we, um, as I think you're aware, um, we have... Uh, <coughs> Dedicate, we're dedicating um, a space um, through a plaque to Alan Dell, a former teacher who um, bequeathed over $650,000 of her estate to the school department to be used for a number, of, um, a number of causes, the most significant of which was scholarships for students. Um, so we have a nice bra a bronze plaque being installed uh, prior to September 21st, and there will be a, a ceremony at 4 p.m. in the Main Street area down near the, the art wing. Um, I'm hoping you can all attend, and I think, Mr. Webster, you, you've agreed to say a few words, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a representative of, of, of Ellie's family coming, as well as some former teachers from the high school that worked with her. So it should be a nice afternoon. I'm, I'm envisioning it in the format of um, what we did for Charlie Jones. 
this past spring. I'm going to skip down to the next one because it's similar. On October 17th, that's a Tuesday, at, also at 4 o'clock, we will be dedicating the plaque in honor of Dr. Troton, the former superintendent of schools, um, whose name, uh, this space will be named in his honor with a, a commemorative plaque outside the, so the distance learning lab. So that too is at, is at 4 o'clock. And um, I think, again, you could say a few words. And I'm going to ask Mr. Betsy also to, uh, right. Yeah, good, great. That'd be nice. Thank you. We'll have some light refreshments at both of those. And I think we're, again, I'm envisioning something similar to what we did for, for Charlie Jones. And then on September 23rd, that's a Saturday, I've been working with, um, with Mr. Colleen, the principal of the Batchelder School. We'll be having a, a kind of a 100th birthday celebration of the Batchelder School on that day. We have uh, kind of a nice program shaping up. We have um, Mr. Webster um, representing the school committee, Mr. Prisco from the Board of Selectmen. We have um, State Representative Brad Jones. I have not heard from Senator Taz's office yet, but he's been invited to, um, to speak. Um, I'll say a few words. We, we're going to have some tours of the building, and we have, we're, we're, we're working on getting a kind of a, a special guest speaker to come, but it hasn't been confirmed yet, so I'd rather not say who that is, but it could be fun. Somebody who has a significant history in the town that might Mr. be Mr. Batchelder? Yes, he's, no. I don't think he's available, Jerry. I was no, so, but Mr. Colleen, Mr. Colleen is working the phone, so to speak, to try to get that. So just, a, you know, kind of a, an informal, formal ceremony of about an hour and a half on, on Saturday, September 23rd. And that'll largely take place in the, in the gymnasium on the stage area. And then attached, again, I said, was a copy of my summer newsletter. I also attached for you, this is I kind of file this under the good news, bad news, if you will. Um, the bad news is we did not get selected to participate in a, uh, an initiative that I had hoped we would. Uh, but the good news is that I think we had 21 members of the staff um, indicate to me that if, if North Reading Public Schools was selected to participate in the Excel initiative, which is a Excellence Through Social Emotional Learning initiative, um, 21 people had said they would be willing to join me um, in that initiative had we been selected. But unfortunately, the competition was very, was very stiff. Um, there were 36 uh, applicants across the state, of which only up to, up to six communities were going to be selected to participate. The initial request for proposal um, su suggested there would be between four and six um, community selected to participate. But again, unfortunately, we were not um, selected to participate. And uh, what it largely was, the Excel initiative is largely a collaborative effort to bring professional development and, and to kind of share best practices um, that communities are doing. I also shared with you a copy of the um, statement of interest that I did supply. Again, I just I thought this was important for you to be aware of. And I, and I largely wanted to um, acknowledge publicly that I was very um, pleased that 21 educators from across the district, elementary, middle, and high school, teachers and administrators um, expressed interest in, in participating, but we were not selected to participate, but I thought it was something that would be of interest to all of you. And then lastly, I just want to um, inform the committee and, and certainly the public that we are um, well on our way to being fully prepared to welcome staff and students back next week. Um, it's hard to believe that it's here already, but it is. Um, it's great to see the kids outside running around and practicing for fall sports. And I had the opportunity, along with Mr. Connolly, to visit our three elementary schools um, on two different days last week. We're here in the middle high school every day, so you know, we certainly have been abreast of what's been going on. And I think um, our staff has done a very nice job in technology, clerical, administrative, buildings and grounds. Um, very, very impressed and thankful for, I think, what has been a very good summer and um, people really, you know, pulling together once again, as they always do, to really, you know, I think, present our schools um, in the best light possible for opening day. So we have a lot, a lot going on, but it's all good things. And um, um, we're, I think it, I share, you know, in the sentiments of a lot of people that we're very excited to start the 2017-18 school year. So. Any comments or questions yeah. on the administrators? I, just, I was saying this earlier, and I just want to congratulate John and Michael and, and Wayne and the staff because, um, you know, I, I've been here a long time. I've never seen the outside of the buildings and the uh, grounds look as good as they do right now. And I'm not just talking about this building. I'm talking about the, the hood, the little, and the batch. Um, really look terrific. I had an opportunity to talk to Wayne the other day and uh, told him that. And um, it was great to see activity at all the schools outside. The DPW was doing a job at the uh, project. At the hood, they were doing one at the little. The little school did a lot of work on the fields out there with yes. the fencing and everything. And I, I, I walked through the batch today, and the, the place looks terrific. It really good. Does. So good. Yeah, I'm glad you're pleased. Thank you. No, well, it's, well it's <laughs> we have good people here. Yeah.
that do that work hard. Well, I just wanted to add that, Thank uh, you for that Mr. Bernard and I had a chance uh, to meet a couple of weeks ago. The uh, lieutenant governor yes. uh, was in town, yeah, yeah. and we had a meeting at uh, the Horseshoe, Horseshoe. Yeah. and there were representatives from the selectmen in the town, and uh, John and myself, and. It was a great meeting. We got to talk to her about uh, some of the things we're doing in this district, um, talked about the Foundation Budget Review Commission to her and told her how important it was that um, the state start funding schools to the tune of about a billion and a half to two billion dollars more a year. She heard me, but I don't know how much she heard me since I don't think there's that much money to spend. And John also um, invited her to, uh, we wanted to get her up here for a visit uh, to our new campus here. She has a lot of interest in uh, STEM or STEAM, and uh, she said she, she'd definitely be interested in coming up here. So I think John hopefully will be I followed up the next day he with did. her aide, and I wrote her an email and again expressed my willingness to host her here once school got up and running. And I haven't heard back, but I did. I thought she was interested in coming. And I mean, it was very uncomfortable for me. I was one of the few does. Democrats in the room, but uh, <laughs> I know uh, myself and Kate Manupelli, we sat oh, next right. to each other. Because you know we had to have strength in numbers in that room, but it was a, it was a good meeting. Um, good. Uh, you know, uh, Brad Jones helped arrange it. Bruce Tara was there. He came in mm -hmm. a little bit late, um, but uh, you know, Mike Prisco talked about a lot of the great programs going on in the town side, and he talked about the Pulte project, the new um, th the new uh, the work we're doing with the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority to get uh, uh, transportation services in here for the elderly and. Um, the, the disabled in town who have issues getting around town and getting some of their appointments out of town. And uh, as I said, we talked a little about schools and Pat, Pat Lee talked a little bit about the uh, restaurant environment and some of the things he'd like to see to make his, uh, his life easier. So it was, uh, it was, she spent a little longer than I think uh, she expected to spend, probably mm. an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, but it was, uh, it was well worth meeting her. I want to give Mike Prisco some credit too. He's got a lot of initiatives going. He does. A lot on the table, the whole board of selectmen does, so. Right. Um, you know they're really working very, very hard. It, the town's the town's moving forward in and in in from what I've seen in a, in a really positive way. They're looking at a lot of things. I think once they get this, uh, they're grappling with this water issue, and I think once they get that settled, they're, they're going to move on to you know getting some sewer sewerage in town. That should really help our business, um, you know, growth of our business district, and which will bring in more taxes, which will allow us to bring more sewerage in town, etc. Get more money for the school department. Exactly. Mr. Bernard. Well, to both your point and Mr. Venezia's, I, I, the lieutenant governor was, I think, A, very well informed on a lot of things that were happening in North Reading, and, and B, very impressed, and expressed her um, sentiments about how impressed she was with the collaboration that was going on in the town. Exactly. And, and the initiative, and she spoke about volunteerism, and it was a very, it was, I, I was impressed that she was, you know, was able to recognize that in such a, you know, an hour, like you said, an hour and 15 minutes maybe with us. I, she was, it was, it, it, it is true. I think it's an accurate reflection of what's going on right now. But it was interesting. She was speaking of a committee they have where they take, like, um, the chairs of yes. various committees and they meet once right. a month or something. She was saying how important that was. And we were talking about our finance planning exactly. team and how it does the yeah, same yeah, exact it's thing just and like it, yeah. facilitates communication right. and hopefully eliminates most surprises and, yeah. I think it's it's worked. So anyway, that's it. Anybody else have anything else? Okay, our next meeting, which I've already put the thing away, is uh, September 25th, correct? 11th. 11th. No. September 11th, then September 25th. And then September 25th, right. Here at 630, uh, both meetings, mm -hmm. probably have executive sessions both nights, but I think so. 630 here for the next two meetings. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Motion by Julie. Can I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Good night. <laughs>